Okay, folks. Well, there's a lot of positivity around. I'm feeling that in this conference in general, you know, we, we're just being exposed to so much. And thank you for being here instead of like, you know, the four other things you could have been at parallel to this, which all sound much more interesting. Pump and dump, for example. How to regenerate entire bioregions. The pedagogy of howling and reimagining research. I mean, I don't know how or why you chose to come to a clowning session when you had all those amazing options. <laughs> but here you are. For some reason, you ended up here. Something about clowning, you know, just tickled your taste buds. I gotta know more. I've gotta know more about this clowning. Why? What's what's relevant about this? Because a lot of people at this conference are talking about environmental stuff, ecology, politics, social justice, all that wonderful stuff. But it, this is this is a little different, maybe. Maybe that's what drew you. Despite the positivity. I, you know, in general, the tone I feel in at the moment in in my emotional landscape is is kind of a little anxious, a little overwhelmed. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of confusion, maybe, and and periods of hopelessness as well as the optimism. There's grief and fear, and <laughs> there's anxiety, and there's uh, you know, we're we're navigating that all the time, and there's there's disconnection. I think a lot of this negativity has to do with these three types of disconnection that we're experiencing, not just us, but like people in the world. Disconnection from ourselves being one, disconnection from others, from each other, and disconnection from kind of spiritual essence. And and we see this around us all the time. And it's we've 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 done it to ourselves, you could say. And we're, we're experiencing at different levels, depending where we are in the world and our economic circumstance, but it's going to reach us all at some point. So there are changes required to address this. And um, Vanessa Machado de Oliveira speaks about the uh, four H's as one approach, one thing we need to bring more into our lives, or four things, humility, honesty, humor, and hyper self-reflexivity. And the more I get involved in this, in, in clowning and also um, more connected with, with the kind of work that Ecoversity is, is committed to, I, I see links between clowning and these four H's or more broadly, the kinds of um, capacities that we need to be developing to negotiate the crisis that we're entering or will have entered. So briefly for me, I'm just going to give you a little overview of how, how I think clowning addresses these before we jump into a little exercise. <laughs> which, um... Um, and we have more people joining us, which is also awesome. Lauren, hi, Lauren. Um, and please, oh, Lauren says much love. That's awesome. Hey, Lauren. Proper. What does proper? What does proper mean? Is that, is that just your proper, or you live in a place called proper? That's how I break you off. <laughs> Properly. Properly. That's awesome. It's an interesting word. Thank you for being here. Dan, you can expound from your perceptions. Much love. <laughs> proper is a poet. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Playing with language. Clowning with the language. So how does clowning do this? Uh, very briefly, I'll try and keep this brief because I want to actually play. Uh, so first of all, clowning is a way of acknowledging, facing our truth, our flaws, as well as our strengths. It's about facing all directions of ourselves and, and laughing at the beauty of our own ridiculousness. When we stand in our shit, we really own it. We acknowledge it. And it relieves us relieves us of so much shame and guilt it becomes a way of actually connecting with with other people a connective tissue rather than something that separates and disconnects us i spoke about this yesterday in my butterfly talk that uh, composting uh, standing in our shit shoveling our shit composting it as through clowning 
The second, so that's the first thing, acknowledging our truth. The second element uh, is that clowns break rules. They break rules. That allows them to play with new possibilities to invent, come up with thoughts and ideas and practices that otherwise we wouldn't think about because we're, we're thinking logically. In clowning, we're off the leash. We're playing outside the normal limits and rules that restrict our thinking. Clowns are not good at following rules, and that's kind of an advantage sometimes. And that gives them great power. It means that we're very present in clowning. And we come back into this space of true interconnection with one another. We're breathing together. And that's really the third thing, actually. The third thing is connection. So we had acknowledging truth, playing, and the third thing is clowning is about connection, connecting to the moment, to what's going on in the space around us. And we see this over and over in workshops and performances where clowning is happening, that everybody in the space suddenly drops into this kind of, this kind of oneness, this space of, of real, in, real deep connection, almost like we're a single brain or a single being acting together and the clown is just there as the kind of um weaver or the the channel that's, that's that's making that happen but it's not really just about the clown about that performer it's it's really a, a collective ritual so that's what we that's what we know about clowning those three things i want to just put those out there Let's do a little exercise. Uh, I call it a warm up. It's a, it's a clown practice. It's a great way of waking up in the morning, doing a morning ritual, but it's also a great way of in any moment when you're feeling a lot of anxiety or distraction of coming back into the body and the, connecting with the playfulness in the body. So we're gonna just gonna go through each body part. And again, I'd really recommend and hope that you would uh, be able to come onto camera for this because it's going to really be nice when we come together and and can connect visually if you can't it's absolutely fine i hope you'll join in anyway so let's start with uh with a hand <clears throat> so i want you to just if possible be standing and just give your hand some some movement just Throw it away, stretch it, contract, stretch, contract, shake it. Really get the blood flowing into it. Make something happen in that hand. And then slowly reduce that movement down. Reduce it down, get slower, 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 slower. And then I want you to close your eyes and completely come to stillness. And notice, bring your, your mind's eye into the, to that hand and observe internally what's going on inside, the sensations inside that hand. Just attentive awareness, alert, connected to the hand. And then you're gonna feel an impulse in that hand to move it in some way. And as you start to move it, just open your eyes gently, softly, and allow yourself to witness the hand moving. And notice that the hand moves almost by itself. Like there's an Im there's impulses happening in the hand that are not something you're controlling, but you'll, you're able to witness it through your through your eyes and see it and have a feeling about it. And just, Invite in a little bit of playfulness into that hand, a little bit of sense of humor, of fun, and just let it play. Let the hand play. You're effectively allowing your hand to clown. Your hand is clowning. Your hand is playing. Where does it take you? Is it small? Is it big? Does it take you for a walk? Are you interested in in the camera, in seeing your hand and playing with it on the screen. Or maybe you're not interested in it at all and it's taking you around the room. Beautiful. And we can let our hands connect a little bit. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Okay, let that go. We're going to let that go. I'm going to come to the other hand, but this time the whole arm as well as the hand. So first of all, just give it some movement. Move, 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 move. Stretch, contract, stretch, contract. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. All the way from the shoulder. Big as possible, big movement. And then slowly reduce that movement down. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Till you reach stillness. Close your eyes and come inside. Observe internally the sensations, the movement inside that hand and arm. And then you're gonna feel an impulse to start moving it in some, in some way, in some direction. And as that happens, open the eyes and be a witness to the playing of the arm and the hand. It's going to play. It's going to invite. You're going to invite human lightness, playfulness. Yeah, beautiful, everybody. Such good work. Try and let it be a whole body thing. So yes, it's it's the arm, but there's an effect that the arm and the hand have on the rest of the body. And it's, it's almost with clowning as though the clown gets to respond to everything, including its own body. So I see my hand and I, I have a, a feeling about the hand, like a, oh. The same thing with my words, my voice. It's like, there's one part of me that's speaking and there's the other part of me that's listening and responding to that. Beautiful. And sh let's shake that off. Now let's come to the, the right foot. Wherever you are, just move that foot around. Rotate, contract, expand, rotate, shake at the ankle, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, move it. Get some blood flowing through it and then bring that movement down slower and slower and slower and slower and slower, and slower until you come to complete stillness. And then close the eyes and come inside. Observe whether that foot can be on the floor resting or you can, you can lift it off the ground a little bit. It's up to you. Still, completely still. Just the movement inside. And notice the movement inside. Become attuned to the sensations. And then feel the impulse to start moving it again, but this time from a place of playfulness, questioning, inquiry, exploration, curiosity. Allow it to start moving and open the eyes. Good, good, yes. What does that foot want to do? What does it want to do? Just follow it, allow it to go on a journey. It's traveling, it's moving, and you're reacting to it. Invite some playfulness, some humor into that foot. Beautiful, and let that go. And now we're gonna to come to the left leg, whole leg this time, the left leg. So shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, move it, move it, move it, move it, rotate. Contract, expand, contract, expand, move, 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 move. And then bring that movement down, 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 down. Bring the movement down. So complete stillness and then close the eyes and come inside. Yes. Notice the impulse. Where is the, where is the impulse? What is the impulse saying? 
And as that leg, the whole leg starts to move, you open your eyes and you notice, you observe. What is that leg doing? Let it take you on a journey. Beautiful. Okay, and let that go. Now we're going to come to the, the face and the head. So give your whole face a stretch out and in and out and in and out. And then give your whole head, not too vigorous, but give your head some rotations on the neck. Move it around. Maybe give your shoulders a little wiggle. That whole head, that whole face, just randomly active. Mm. Active, 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 moving. And then slowly bring that down, bring that down to stillness and close the eyes. And notice what impulses are. Where is the impulse? What does the face want to do? Open the eyes as it starts to move. Notice how everything through these eyes, how it looks, how everything looks. How does, how does the world look to you? How does it occur to you? Beautiful. And we're going to finish with the whole body now. So let's give the whole body shake, flop down, flop down completely, touch the floor, moving the shoulders back and forth, nodding the head, yes, shaking the head, no. And then as you come up, I want you to, we're going to do something slightly different this time. As you come up, you're going to imagine that you're sending lightning bolts or shafts of light energy out into the room. <laughs> to the floor, to the ceiling, to the walls. <laughs> Not just with your hands, but with your legs, with your face, with your belly, with all the different parts of the body. Beautiful, guys. Yes. Awesome. And as those lightning bolts hit the wall or the ceiling they bounce back at you and you have to receive them so you send the lightning bolt hits the wall bounces back and you receive it and then you send it out again it bounces and you receive it and then you send it out and it bounces and you receive it and it gets faster and faster and you're reacting and sending and reacting and sending lovely beautiful guys and then slowly slowly Bring that down, bring it down, contain it more, contain it more, slow down. But there's still that feeling. There's still that feeling that you're sending out energy, that it's bouncing off the walls and coming back to you. Come to complete stillness, but it's a connected stillness. You're completely connected with the air with the walls, with the space, with the floor. And as you open your eyes again, you can just take a moment to explore that amazing sensation of total connection. That you are kind of carving the space, kind of sculpting the space. Every little speck of something on the wall is part of you. Every little mark on the floor 
every little wrinkle. There's something for you to respond to, including these people on the screen, some of whom are visible, some of whom are there. We know they're there, even though we can't see them. And we can just come to the, to the camera, to the screen, and include their world in our feeling of connectivity. Almost though you can reach through that camera and magically connect with the world on the other side. Beautiful. So that's a, it's a warm up. It's an exercise. It's a way of having a clown practice. And I'd love to, could you just, just open up the chat and just write a few things, how you're feeling right now. You can write the obvious stuff or you can write less obvious stuff, make it real, make it truthful or, or some observation during that exercise. Maybe something occurred to you. I'd love to know if um, Maria and Cherise and Manish, who I can't see, I will, I'm, I'm hoping you did it. And I'd love to hear in the chat how it went for you. Stirred my imagination, says Cherise. That was an amazing release of energy, says Lauren. Yes. We're doing it online. Yeah, for sure. Childlike. My body needed that. Thanks, Dan. Also realize what I'm going to eat for lunch. Yeah, that's important. Hands feel good. I'm I'm feeling a little bit of tingliness right now on my skin. A lot of the whole whole body sort of a little bit more alive than it was at 7:30 a.m. when I started the session. It is a really good thing to do in the morning uh, to just start the day. But it's also, you know, if you have any kind of um, moment during the day when you need to come back more into your body and become more present, Maria says warmer. And it's also something that I do with actual clown performers as a warm up. So I'm going to talk a little bit more and please feel free to jump into the chat or just, um, you know, if you've got something to say and or, or some question or interaction, just you can always just put up your hand and or come off mute and jump in. I won't be offended. So becoming more present with our truth. So what is the truth right now? I mean, crisis, I, I call this session crisis, clowning in times of crisis. What are we, what is this crisis? I mean, maybe you don't need to speak about that too much because I think you all have a have an understanding of, of what that is. Sometimes it feels like we're on this giant spaceship that's hurtling towards self-destruction despite the warnings. And if you if you know the movie um, by Charlie Chaplin, yes, Maria, Poly Crisis, thank you. Yes, uh, feel free to jump in the chat and say what you you know what your understanding of that is. If you've seen that movie Modern Times by Cha Charlie Chaplin, there's this moment where he's there's a machine uh, he's operating and it gets faster and faster and faster and faster and and eventually he kind of gets sucked into the machine and becomes part of the machine. And it's like this, we've created this, these machines and we're being sucked into them and become part of them. And it becomes difficult to distinguish the human from the technology. We're so reliant on it. And our ability to perceive and our faculties to survive are compromised, you know, in, in the real world in the in the world without machines so what happens when we one day don't have the machines how are we going to cope with that they're weakening us somehow making us more vulnerable i see this with my kids you know how much how dependent they seem to be how the desire they have to interact with technology education is based on machines it's mechanized despite the amazing work that educationists have done over the years. And we, we see this problem. 
we know what we should be creating, but apart from little pockets here and there in the world, we're creating an education system that doesn't prepare our children for the actual world. We know that the business world is out of control. The environment is a huge problem. It's ugly. There's a crisis of leadership. So clowning helps us face the facts, face the truth. And we're complicit in this crisis. We can't point the finger at other people because our lifestyles are built on inequality and unsustainability. I should say, I should speak for myself, mine is. And this is not to feel us bad or beat ourselves up about it. It just, and this just keeps us in paralysis. This is just some of the shit that we have to take responsibility for, that we have to confront. And this is just my personal accounting. You know, you have to make your own. But I hope we can at least agree that at the moment, many of us are not facing the truth. We just tend to spend time making ourselves feel more comfortable, engaging in unhealthy practices. Change is inevitable. The question is, are we ready to face it? And what do we need to do to prepare? And that's where I feel that clowning comes in it helps it can help us to negotiate this seemingly downward spiral that we're trapped within so i want to return to these three elements of clowning i mentioned earlier with a slightly different nuance to apply them to this crisis first of all clowning offers a way not only to acknowledge the truth and the darkness but also a way to heal it Clowns are good at standing in their shit, but they're also good at composting the shit. I love this analogy because we are literally composting. I mean, we we literally compost shit in the, in the world. We, we're, we're learning how to do that, our own shit. We're, we're composting it. We're turning something that seems like waste, right, that we flush away, and we're turning it into the basis of new life, something nutritious, fertile soil. On a metaphorical level, clowning also does this. I, I mean, I say metaphorical because the shit, in the case of clowning, is not actual shit, but it's, it's equivalent. You know, it's our mental, spiritual shit. It's shame. A lot of it is shame. The feeling, you know, shame being the, the judgment that we have about feelings we're having. Clowning is able to take this and transform it into something fertile, something nutritious in which new seeds can be planted. So this ability that clowns have to stand in the shit is, and, and to compost it is fundamental. The second thing I mentioned was playing, right? That clay, clowns play with, break the rules. Playing with new possibilities, the lifting of rules that normally restrict our thinking. Clown literally offers a way for us to reimagine how we can be as individuals and think as a society through their ability to transgress and subvert expectations. We know we need to reinvent our relationship to the world or to each other, but we don't know what that looks like. If you wanted to ask somebody to create that possible future, you might want to ask a clown. Because thinking outside the box, right? They're not limited by the kinds of conventional thinking most people are limited by. The third thing is that clowns do all this in the context of deep, truthful connection with one another. We've said we don't know what the future looks like. And we have to accept being in the not knowing. But if we're going to do that, what better way to do it than in, in the context of loving support with one another? We need that connection. And again, clowns are masters at this. So composting the shit, reimagining who we are, and doing it in the context of deep, truthful connection with one another. And a summary of that is that clowning offers transformation on multiple levels, personal, spiritual, social, cultural, and it's exciting. It's not just that clowns can come in and wave a magic wand or a red nose around and suddenly everything's okay. 
this is, it is practice. It takes practice. And I don't want to belittle the, the practice or the effort that it's going to take. But I believe that clown, clowning has many of the tools that we need, that humility, honesty, humor, hyper self-reflexivity. So I want to just finish with, for the last 20 minutes, uh, an exercise that is going to take some courage if you choose to do it. And it involves the composting of the shit. So it's an exercise that you can do at different levels. You can choose to really invest in it and do it very physically. You can do it very internally and more of more as a, a visualization internally. You can, at the end, there'll be space to share what came up for you and you can choose to share because sharing is a big part of shoveling the shit, right? Sharing the shit, shovel it and then we need to share it. But you might not be ready to share it today and that's also fine. It might just be something you store away for another time or, or write down. So just see what comes up as I take you through this. I'm just seeing some questions here. I love the, I love the connection to composting. I never thought of planning like that, says Cherise. Yes. And Marie says, do you incorporate the jester archetype and the fool archetype under your definition of clowns? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. I mean, there are subtle distinctions, but then they're, they're not hard and fast distinctions. And for me, they're all part of the same family tricksters also yeah hi vanessa so i'd love to um discuss that more maybe after we do this exercise so for this exercise feel free to be lying lying down if you want or sitting or standing whatever feels feels good for you and when i ask you to physicalize in the exercise you don't need to do it really super big you could do it really small or as i said you could just do it internally if it makes you feel more comfortable to have the camera off that's fine if you, if it if it seems to add something for you to have it on so that you feel you know that i'm here with you and kind of holding the, holding the space for you then that's also fine so everything's fine everything's fine guys <laughs> okay hi katty Welcome. Um, so let's start with our eyes closed, wherever you are. And just take a moment to get back into that space of playful openness. Maybe let a smile, a little smile come to your lips as you just enjoy that simple presence and awareness of yourself the blood flowing through your veins and the breath coming in and out. And all the other stuff just being a distant awareness. And there's a beautiful sense of serenity, calmness that just brings you a little little joy, <laughs> maybe even a little laughter, just from the relief of letting it all go. <laughs> Good. And then you can imagine that, that you're like a very flat ocean with not a breath of wind. And then suddenly within that serene picture, something arrives to disturb. Some ruffle, some little element
something a niggle something niggling at the back of your mind or your heart what is it what is that niggle it could be probably the first thing when i said that the first thing that came to mind is probably the thing maybe it's that um, meeting you have tomorrow that you're not quite prepared for or that email you haven't written yet or that conversation that needs to be had with that person or that sink full of dishes needs to be dealt with or whatever it is for you or it could be something more existential, just a feeling, something. And I want you to focus on that niggle. We're going to just allow it to kind of become a little bigger in our frame. Consciously allow it to become bigger and bigger. And notice your demeanor change from the serenity to the something else what what does it change to bothered irritated frustrated something different from the serenity that niggle is getting bigger and bigger you might even with the eyes open notice something in the space that is a physical niggle something that's not quite in the right place or broken or dirty. I want you to just start to let that thing get bigger and bigger and, and notice your emotion shifting and say yes to that in a playful way. Say yes to that emotion that the niggle brings up. Something that's something you can't control something that's and just notice that emotion getting bigger and bigger and and let it let it get as big as it wants to and maybe you start to physicalize it a little bit in the body maybe there's a an, a kind of shifting in the body as you respond to that irritating niggling thing that is, that's not perfect the flaw in your perfect serene sea of existence beautiful okay and then we're just going to let that go let it go let it get smaller let that little niggle get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it just disappears in a little bing, bing break of light that just disappears and you've got the serene sea again. And just enjoy that serenity again, breathe into it. Just enjoy that, like feel your Buddha energy, just release. And we're going to do something similar, but this time I want you to reach deeper, deeper. This niggle, this time, it's not really just a niggle. It's a something deeper down from underneath the sea. And you might have to dive down. You might visualize yourself diving down beneath the waters in search of something that is imperfect, something that's lurking, hiding down there underneath the still surface. It doesn't necessarily want to show itself. It's a, a deeper unease, something you're struggling with. Try to make it very specific and literal to you. When you find it, what is it? What is it that you find down there? something from your past or some anxiety about the future, 
some incomplete thing. Maybe some source of shame. You can think about shame. What is it that's really causing anxiety, causing fear, causing shame? Thing that's troubling you. And I want you to locate that and allow that now to fill your frame, fill your world. It gets bigger and bigger. And notice your response to that. So if you haven't got something yet, just, just choose something. What is a source of shame for you that goes back, maybe back years and years and years? And maybe it's something you're not, no longer feeling shame about, but you could still use it for this exercise. And as you think about that thing in your life, I want you to just try to find, maybe this has already happened for you, but if, if not, I want you to try to find an object. It could be a literal object that you have in your, in your house, or in your room or just an imaginative one in your mind, but a, a thing, a physical thing that sort of is associated with that feeling that's bothering you, that shame. What is this object? Maybe it's something that you can hold Maybe it's too big for that, but you can imagine yourself in relation to this object. The object is in the space with you. And as you imagine yourself with this object, just notice what, what is the emotion that you have about the object that's representing your shame? Is it fear? You want to run away from it? Is it anger? Is it something you want to break? Is it something you want to hide away? Or maybe it's even something that you feel attracted to in a weird way that you, you want to hold cling to sometimes we cling to the things that bring us shame so what is it try to be as honest and real about it as possible and it might change from moment to moment but in your mind's eye i want you to almost like you're watching a film of yourself find an action or a series of actions with this object. So try to be very specific. What is the object that represents the shame? And what is the action or series of actions that you are doing with the object or to the object or? Don't worry too much about following every step of this. Just see where your mind takes you. And now is when I would invite you, if you want, to lightly physicalize this action and object in the space where you are. So even with, with eyes closed or open, you can just start to move the body to replicate in real space this action or relationship to this object or thing physical thing and maybe you in this space you have the actual physical thing that you can use or maybe it's just a projection like an imaginative imagined thing in space beautiful yeah 
that's fine if you just want to keep it internal or externalize it, physicalize it. And But either way, I want you to start to build, to exaggerate that movement more and more, inviting in more playfulness, make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And just see, just to see where it goes, where it goes. It's an experiment. We're exploring. What happens if you do this action with more intensity, more volume, more vigor, more speed, just something more, make it exaggerated, excessive, build it until something shifts, until something changes. It's going to build to a peak, to a climax. And I don't know what it is, but something that's going to be a key climactic moment yeah. where something changes, something transforms. It may be in you, maybe in the object, or something else comes into the picture from outside. Just notice what it is. And notice the potential for a play, for humor. Notice the, the potential for ridiculousness, for ex excess. Even as you're completely immersed in this situation, you there's a part of you that's witnessing yourself doing it and is able to see the, the funny side, the ridiculous side. And I'd invite you to, before you come back to the space, I'm going to ask you to share or, or write down or just reflect on what came up for you. But before you do that, just make sure you've got a kind of, you've got the whole thing kind of framed and recorded for yourself internally. So just go back over it for a second. What, what was the initial thing that caused the shame or the deep unease? What was the object? How did you start to interact with the object? How did it build? And then how did it transform or how did the situation shift? You can play it and fast forward. And whatever this is for you hopefully there's some information which which could be useful if you were a performer or a clown this would actually be something you could this would be research you know you could turn this into a, a scene or a skit or a piece maybe but if we're not performers it can still have serve a function composting something that's deep in the unconscious some shit that we can bring to the surface and become a little bit more light and playful with. So I invite you to um, to come back into the space. And if you've got something to write with and you want to make a few notes on what happened, or I would also love you to write into the chat a couple of words summarize maybe what happened it could be that you know you tell us uh, what was the object that you found or the thing and the nature of your relationship with it something of the story
And if anybody wants to come off mute and talk about it, that would also be wonderful. We're just about to hit time, but I think we'll go over a few, a few minutes just to reflect and wrap this up. But of course, if anybody needs to go, that's understandable. Hi. Cause... Hey, I'd Vanessa. Like to... I want to be, I'd like to share. Yeah, please do. So the shame was related to emptiness. So related to spaces that are not containing me and then me getting sucked in by it as wanting to fill it and feeling it's me, feeling it's because of me, and then getting this desperate attempt to pull it towards me. Whereas, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it brings me shame, no? That this, this, yeah, it's actually a tragedy that can, but you said when you said make it bigger, it's like really pathetically running for it and, grasping and then uh yeah in like in, yeah just like this uh, attempt to whereas actually the it's it's coming from the outside so it's my job to do it from within the inside so yeah that was my <laughs> I, yeah. I, didn't, I don't think i solved it except that i think it's yeah it, if it's coming from the outside i'm just gonna have a very um it's gonna have, it's gonna be pulling me in all the time as a natural effect. Yeah, interesting. That's so cool. Did you notice a particular shift, like something change at any point? Well, I gave up. <laughs> I gave, up. <laughs> I gave oh. up trying to pull it in. So I just, yeah. <laughs> and what happened? What? Well, maybe you don't know, but what happens? What happened when you gave up? Mm, yeah, that it's a thing from within that I have to do. It's a job for. It's an inside job. But I, what I mean is, if you if you give up in that scenario, so you're being I'm sucked in, like, sucked in by the void. Right, right. So you spend it's, all this time and energy trying to avoid being sucked in. Yes, but because it's empty, it's sucking me in. Yeah. So I get into a loop, like, you know, and then it's like, okay, then I have to let it go and like get out of the spin of it, of the, you know, the current, the kind of world whirlwind. Yeah. And go within, something like that. Yeah. And is it, does it feel like a relief when you let go? Yeah. <laughs> it's still painful and it still brings kind of shame but i understand it's not me you know it's not me yeah so it does help me transform it towards within which is the inside yes. job beautiful these are these are almost like very sophisticated jokes you know we're clowning it's like it's a joke but it's also painful it's a painful joke like we're afraid of something that's that's inevitable. Like we're going to be sucked into this thing. We're all going to be sucked into it. And we spend all this energy trying to like avoid it. And then when we, we find that when we let go and we get sucked into it, it's, that's actually, I don't know, maybe beautiful, maybe okay, maybe. Um, thank you, Vanessa. Cherie says, my object was a dress I hated wearing as a child and I wildly threw paint at it and ripped it up into a new outfit. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So, and, um, <laughs> some clowning going on behind me here. Um, yeah. And that's a very, I can really imagine that as a clown routine, right? You know, just you. Cherise coming coming in with this dress uh, that you really really hate and and because you hate it you throw things at it and you tear it as if you're trying to destroy it and then and then suddenly you realize that it's it's what you want it's it's awesome it's beautiful it's you've transformed it through that um 
through that sort of random anger, you've transformed it into something that feels right, a new outfit. Um, Dan says, my ship was shutting down when around, was shutting down, went around, complaining that it's not, that is not action oriented. I saw a chalkboard, very long chalkboard and visualized myself snapping it in two, then turned into chalk dust and it scattered all over the room. Cool. I love it. Yeah, such a, such a strong visual image. Uh, Kathy says, what am I going to do with the last 20 years of my life? <laughs> That's very specific. <laughs> but 20 years. Related to garbage and depth in this, and death in the sea, in the deep sea, yes. Associated with surplus clothes I'm taking out for other people to wear. I found what made me laugh at this load, and I learned that for at least the next 20 years, if I live them, I must lighten up in every way. Yeah. Beautiful, Catty. And something about in clowning this connection between these very deep existential problems and these very, like, trivial or everyday problems or objects you know like clothes surplus clothes carrying a big somehow i have this image of you uh con con connecting these two things the deep sea the garbage and then your and then the surplus clothes and they're really disconnected images but somehow they're funny or interesting together Anything else, and, Kathy? And on that? Of course, I, I felt a uh, relief because if, even if I don't do anything significant in those maybe 20 years I will live, I will, I, I, I discover I can at least be light in every, in, in every, in everything I have, like, first of all, ego, <laughs> how to, to deconstruct ego and relief of everything that you think you belong or you have or you those loads you have uh, are, or you have been accumulating through yeah. life so thank you very much yeah. <laughs> i yeah. have a uh, homework to do thank you so much yeah we all have homework to do but hopefully it can be fun some of it well thank you for going with me on that journey and i hope you got a little tiny glimpse of what clowning is all about. You can check me out if you're interested. Um, Clown-spirit.com is my website. And um, I have a YouTube channel, which is full of videos about clowning and what, it all, what it's all about. Um, and I have a this space that Dan is actually um, helping me create, which is called Clown Spirit Village. And it's a place where people come. Uh, it's a virtual place. So you can do it from anywhere in the world. Oh, uh, thanks, Dan. You put Dan's put a link in the in the chat there. Yes. Oh, it's clown dash spirit, actually, Anushka. That that link you've put there, I'm not sure if it's I just clicked on it out of interest. Oh yeah, that's another thing called clown spirit, which um is also awesome. Based in the Netherlands, but that's a physical school. Mine is clown dash spirit. Can you pop that in the, oh yeah, clown dash spirit. And um, it's all online, it's all virtual. So you can do it from anywhere in the world. And we have this membership that's clown spirit village. And I do uh, coaching sessions every week. And we have masterclasses with um, amazing clown teachers from all over the world as well. So it's not just me, it's kind of like a community of clowns supporting one another. And for me, it's not just about the art of clown, but like, how do we bring it into our everyday lives, not just on a stage or in a circus, but um, making it a practice.